everyone. Welcome to Shark Week. <laughs> Although it's on CBS and there's been a lot of cutbacks, so it's just Friday night for a couple of minutes. <laughs> and we don't have any sharks, just an immigrant with a puppet. <laughs> the Wrestling Life. Hey everybody, it's The Wrestling Life, episode 384. It is still technically the first week of September, 2024. I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. Liam, we have so much to talk about this week. Uh, yeah, and we'll try to keep your talking <laughs> to a minimum, because you're still ill, right here on the first and only wrestling podcast. You're playing hurt, buddy. It's always a great start when your co-host says, you know what? Why don't you shuddy? Why don't you shuddy this episode? It's a good idea, though. That's I... is more, as Ranch Wilder has taught us. That's right. Uh, I've been sick for four weeks now. Four weeks today. No idea what's going on. Have you been to a doctor or a patient first? Or a teledoc? Of course not. Or Googled your symptoms on WebMD. I've Googled my symptoms endlessly. Okay, cool. Near as I could tell. I had what, is, this... what does Google AI that's been trained on Reddit posts say you have? Yeah, that's really not good. Um, so um, my prevailing belief is that I had the flu, which became bronchitis. Mm -hmm. And so a two-week flu became a two-week bronchitis. And then uh, I don't know what's going on now. So there you go. How are you doing, pal? How are you doing, pal? Comparatively, just fine. Uh, it's been a quiet week here at Lake Will Be Gone. Um, it's, uh, yeah, things are going here. And well, without further ado, I guess let's get, uh, let's get into the wrestling. <laughs> Sounds good. WWE had... Bash in Berlin and NXT No Mercy this past weekend. Um, I was out of commission. What did you think of these shows? <laughs> uh, Bash in Berlin, uh, a fine way to spend a Saturday afternoon. Um, if you watch the replay and could fast forward through the, all the commercials. <laughs> yeah, that would have helped. But um, I think... And this is a theme. We didn't do a show for All In because, as mentioned, you were uh, <laughs> you were in week like two and a half of your four plus weekend illness. Yeah. But a um, lot easier to forgive a long show when when it's over. The sun is still up. I find. Sure. Um, felt that way about All In, and I felt that way about Bash Berlin. Which Bash Berlin, not nearly as long as All In. Just to be clear, even with commercials and all of the faffing about that I often complain about. I think the show was still right around three hours. So um, yeah, it was, it was watchable. So it was a five match show. You got in, you got out. Uh, I don't think anything was shocking as far as like match results. Um, so Gunther beat Orton. Um, the Priest and Ripley won the mixed tag. Mm -hmm. Punk beat Drew. Bianca and Jade won the women's tag titles back, and uh, Cody beat Kevin Owens. Yeah, I think I think most of those, if not all of those, were things we expected to happen going in. So um, maybe maybe I thought Liv and Dom would get like a banana peel victory because <laughs> they keep getting beat up two on six by Rhea and and, uh, and Damian. Um, but in the case of this and the uh, the Punk. Punk Drew uh, match results. Uh, even though the baby face is one clean, we're just going to keep doing it for a while longer. Yeah, they kept uh, they kept the Punk and Drew program uh, pretty strongly going on Raw on Monday. And uh, new voice of Raw, Joe Testor. What do you think? Uh, here's what I think. I have a care. I have a, a series of prepared statements regarding Joe Testor. Joe Testator looks like a realtor who does coke on the weekends and cheats on his wife. Joe Testator looks like the husband of a lady on one of those Real Housewives shows that will eventually be arrested for tax fraud. And finally, 
Joe Testator looks like a Division II lacrosse coach from Long Island who gets fired after he calls someone the F word for gay people. Well, there you go. Um, I, as, as far I, as... I would, <laughs> I, would, I would like the listener to send in their own Joe Testator uh, looks like. Please, please do. Uh, yeah. But uh, yes, at TWL underscore podcast, if you're not one of the few listeners that actually already interacts with us. Yeah, don't um, at me. Yeah, don't add Ethan. Um, <laughs> you're a public figure and public writer, but please don't talk to him. Just kidding. Anyway. Um, yes, uh, as far as his voice, uh, I don't know. I I think he tr- he tried. He, he, <laughs> if we're doing this on the scale of like Adnan Verk to and Mike Adam Lee on the low end to, you know, I don't know prime jim ross or or gorilla monsoon you know he's he's somewhere in the middle (laughs) he's somewhere between the worst commentator you ever heard and the best commentator you ever heard yeah i mean as far as modern wwe commentators i think he'll fit right in i do wonder what's it feel like for uh for that kid in nxt who's like 38 years old and has been passed over for one of these two announced jobs like 18 times in a row now and they fired his wife. And they fired his wife. What's that kid thinking right now? That 38 year old kid. He I think 38 might be low. <laughs> I think he's older than me. Well, uh I just I just think about that. I think he did have a brief stint as like the third guy on on a SmackDown crew for a while. He was the lead on Raw. Oh, he was on Raw. Okay. He was the lead on Raw with Jerry Lawler and uh Mason Madden. <laughs> About that team, they just put the future Masse on uh, on commentary for a while. Um, yeah, yeah. So like he had a stint. So like they like him enough to keep him, but not enough to ever give him another shot on one of the A shows. So just Looks that way. I don't know. I like I said, Joe Joe Sestor did not bother me. He doesn't seem to know a lot of like names of moves, but that can be taught. Uh, and he has Wade Barrett, who does know the names of most, if not all the moves. So he Wade can hopefully cover for his weaknesses. Um, I got a real big kick out of when Drew attacked Punk again, and he goes, what, that's, that's Drew McIntyre in a hoodie. Yeah. It sure was, Joe. It sure was. He has the finer points maybe to pick up on, but I thought, uh, I mean, he blew away the uh, Adnan Verks and Jimmy Smith of the world. And he has the voice and he has the uh, the passion. And uh, this guy was doing Monday Night Football like three years ago. Like, <laughs> uh, this is kind of a big deal announcer. So uh, I hope it works out for everyone. And I thought he was good, but we'll see. Uh, AEW has a pay-per-view this weekend. Uh, NXT, I have no thoughts on NXT. <laughs> this is the, uh, it's like weird TNA 2.0 uh, product going on right now. I don't really know what to make of it. But AEW has their second pay-per-view in three weekends this weekend. Um, are you hyped? Are you ready for another uh, AEW pay per view already? Um, hyped is not is not a word I would use. <laughs> um, I I am on paper. It looks like it could be. Stop me for this before. On paper, mm-hmm. it looks like a great in ring show or a very good in ring show. Um, doesn't look like. Uh, but we all know that there will be matches added between when we record and when the show is on the air, there will be a pre-show and this show will go into the wee hours of the night. Unfortunately, our streak of daytime afternoon pay-per-views is over. Uh, So there, there will be a time on this show where I have had enough, I have to think, but there's stuff on this show that I think I'm, I'm pretty excited for. Um, uh, We can, we can get into the card in a moment here, but yeah, it's, you know, I as far as AEW shows, I would say I am about as interested in this as I was any of the non 
any of the shows that I didn't drive to to see live this year. Fair enough. Uh, we have uh, we had an arson on television this week to set up uh, the main event of this pay per view. I assume this is going on last. The unsanctioned lights out steel cage match between former world champion Sorcerer Gun, former world champion Hangman Adam Page. Um, one of these guys should probably be the champion right now. No offense to your guy, but uh, I don't know. What do you think about this being on top? What do you think about another uh, televised arson? Um, yeah, I mean, this is not my, <laughs> this is not really my thing in wrestling. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever said that before. Sports entertainment is not your thing in wrestling? No, no, not really. You don't, um, you don't like to be sports entertained. All right. Sometimes I do. There, there are exceptions to the rule. And as far as, arson segments go in pro wrestling history this one was you know well produced i suppose so hangman page burnt down swerve strickland's childhood home that he just purchased and they did a couple of vignettes uh with him and prince nana talking about how much this purchasing his childhood home meant to him and then they burnt it down it is one of those things where it feels like you should have done this a month ago and then Paige burns it down, but uh, whatever. Um, they sure but, did in, in a week, yeah. Yes, it felt like they're like, we need to do a big go-home angle. And look, I if, if I can give one sort of like, sort of compliment to this, a cartoonishly over-the-top act such as this I do think these two guys are the maybe the only people in the company, if not the earth currently, that could put on a match that could like have a cartoonish amount of violence and hatred put into it that feels appropriate for a feud where a guy burned down the other guy's house. So I think we're gonna get a lot of violence and uh, and blood and 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 wild stuff. So. Like, if anyone can live up to what could you possibly do to a guy after he's burned your house down, short of, you know, pulling out a gun, uh, you know, these guys will find find some creative ways to uh, to maim each other. So, yeah, it's it's look, I've talked about this. I think this this is still the hottest feud in the company. It's been going for about a year now, and it still is, which obviously there's been breaks because Hangman was off TV for a while. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I I was a little bit disappointed when they announced that this match was happening so quickly because it feels like we're just getting we're just getting the fire back under it and we're already ready to blow it off again. But maybe this isn't the blow off, you know, maybe maybe it will continue past here though it's hard to imagine what what stipulation you can go to after texas death match and steel cage that would feel you know worthy of this feud where the guys are literally trying to murder each other it's um <laughs> it it's AEW, man this could be the blow off or they could go six more months you don't know um, I will say that when you mentioned one of the participants perhaps carrying a gun mm -hmm. in this week's Frasier Observer radio segment, <laughs> there's an episode of Frasier where Frasier is uh, doing a 1940s style radio drama at, at, the, at his radio station. And one of the, uh, uh, he has to get a bunch of actors last minute to read his radio drama. And uh, one of the actors is dyslexic and uh, proclaims at a very dramatic point in the radio drama, he's got a nug. <laughs> <laughs> and then Fraser breaks in, a gun. He's got a gun. <laughs> he has a nug. <laughs> Great I, story. As an aside, I have... Uh, I've started being served in my Instagram algorithm clips from the Frasier account. Yeah. Delightful. Yeah. Oh, it's tremendous. It's like, I, I really recommend it if you have a second screen. Mm -hmm. um, 
while you're watching or uh, play video games or something, just power through. I think about four episodes a night is about the right the right number. Okay. And uh, there you go. Yeah, I think it's on Hulu now. But there you go. All right, stay tuned. All right. Yeah, you're never going to do that. But that's fine. <laughs> Breaking down the rest of this all out card. Brian Danielson versus Jack Perry. Brian Danielson is finally the world champion, and Jack Perry is an evil little boy. <laughs> I think that about covers it. Yeah, uh, no, I don't have a lot to uh, to add there. It'll be a good match, but I don't think it will be particularly memorable. Well, it's there to give uh, Danielson a win. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Mercedes Monet versus Haru Shida with Camille Ben from ringside for the TBS championship. Um, I don't know why we just did this match on TV two weeks ago, three weeks ago, and now it's a pay-per-view match, but I think maybe um, should, should there, be fine. I think there's a desire to uh, make people not remember the last pay-per-view match that Mercedes had. Rip Baker just hasn't been around since then. No. Nope. Interesting, isn't it? Yeah, it's really interesting that uh I has Christian been on a show either since that's unrelated to Brit, of course, but um mm. uh, you know, I don't I don't really recall. And he and he won, so you'd think he'd be it. He and he won a title shot, which again I think most people assume would be at this show. But anyway, uh yeah, some people just sometimes they win a match and then disappear or lose a match and then disappear. Which is fine if people are taking time off, though, again, Britt just got back and, uh, you know, it would be weird if she was just off TV again, but it would be equally weird if she were just off TV again and they don't address it at all. I think so. it's probably pretty on brand. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It feels like. Uh, <laughs> but they do do that a lot. <laughs> yeah. And it feels like for the last year ish, it feels like uh, she's been on her way out. Yeah, I think I think the clock is uh, is ticking for her to uh, go go up to New York. Yeah, um, there doesn't seem to be much uh, keeping her attached to that company anymore. And I think uh, in the ring, the company has outgrown her, and she should go somewhere else. I think it would be good. I think it would be good for everyone if Bert Baker went to. Uh, went up north so we'll see what happens but um yeah in the meantime i think uh mercedes wants to have good wrestling matches and not make people fixate on uh the bad one she had a couple of uh a couple of weeks ago at all in so. we were we were talking about that a little bit off the air and uh i said i don't want to blame this bad match that mercedes <laughs> and Britt had on Britt, but i've seen one of the participants have 150 good matches and i've seen the other participant have three good matches <laughs> so i'm gonna go ahead and blame the person that i've seen have three good matches for yeah. why that was bad and like it's okay it's okay if you are if you are limited in the ring but you're very charismatic yes. you, have great, you have great live show charisma as <laughs> yeah, as your boss right. recently i'm at it coined a tremendous new term i should i should add that to the lexicon yeah yes that is uh very respectful term it's a nice way of saying she has a great look yeah absolutely it's we're adding layers to refusing to just say that the person is attractive yes um but anyway it's fine and it's fine yeah like brit's best matches were gimmick matches where she could use you know thumbtacks and tables and blood and that's fine you know who else's best matches were that were those type of matches a lot of people the sandman the sandman (laughs) she is a vibes wrestler and that's fine but when you have when you have to go out there and try to have a wrestling grappling contest for the champ for the championship and you try to go back and forth with someone like Mercedes, it, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't work out so good most of the time if you're at the level that Brit is, especially after a very long layoff. So, uh, yeah, well, <laughs> to be continued on all of that. But anyway, she and. Uh, and Mercedes, Mercedes will have a good match, and one of your you, favorites and my favorite. That's right. Uh, uh, thinking about buying that Sheeta shirt. Don't think I will though, mm-hmm. because of my shame. Um, yes. Mm-hmm. 
but uh, I, I lost that decades ago. <laughs> it would be for the best if I probably if I lost mine too. But um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, it, we got if nothing else, we got the great uh, soundbite of uh, of Sheeta again to steal one of your gimmicks. Sure, uh, got very was very amused by uh, Sheeta saying "Sayonara, bitch." This week on Dynamite, that uh, that popped me. Is it racism that only in AEW only the Japanese wrestlers say "bitch"? <laughs> it's that I don't feel like I've tracked that. It's Okada. It's oh yeah, yeah, okay. It's Shida. <laughs> it is. It is Okada's whole thing. It's the only word Okada says. Yes. Uh, he had another. He had another uh, long wrestling match on TV this week. Not clicking for me. Not clicking for me. His third and I thought it was one of his better <laughs> low bar because he's had like four. But yeah. uh, you know, it, the match was designed to be like, look what a great wrestler Kyle Fletcher is, which is fine, but uh, it's, it's counterproductive to everything they're trying to do. But well, yeah. also because Okada's yeah. going to beat him at the end, so it's like, yes. Um. Can I can I just mention too? That's like my number one problem with AEW announcing is that the announcers spend so much time putting the losers over in a match that it's like that it undercuts the winners. It's like there's a way you could do that where it's like um, you're not burying the loser. But then there's a way to do it where you're burying the winner by praising the loser so much. And I feel like they do that in every match. It happens a lot. Not every, not every, not every match between a person you're currently pushing and a person you're not currently pushing has to be an epic struggle that the the victor barely uh, barely escapes. Lady Frost has gotten more run from Tony Schiavone than <laughs> than than Brian Danielson has. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Unreal. Okay, good. That's my soapbox. Um. Yeah. MJF versus Danny Garcia is on this show. I, for me, no one asked, but for me, MJF and Chris Jericho should uh, get a timeshare together. <laughs> uh, condo, uh, maybe somewhere uh, in the in the Caribbean. And uh, they should go away for a year. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen. MJF just came back. Uh, but he's shooting here with Danny Garcia. What do you think of this? Look, it's about time you you pissed or get off the pot with the speaking of stop start stop pushes. Uh, we're on like the the Danny Garcia push number nine. Sure. Um, so look, if you're gonna have him go in there and thrash MJF and win, great. I'm all for it. You're elevating a guy theoretically. Um that's that's good and mjf will not be hurt by losing two matches in quick succession um so if 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 this if the point of this is hey we're really going to get behind danny garcia this fall and he's going to go after the he's going to go after okada or he's going to go after uh Os- osprey still international champion whatever you're going to do with him after this great yeah. i'm all for it um uh MJF as a whole, I don't disagree. Uh, despite his already being out for six months this year, uh, he feels a little stale. Um, so I, yeah, I don't, I don't know what you do with him after this. Um, I mean, I guess he just goes on feuding with someone else, hopefully. Uh, but again, uh, it is this is, I mean, this was a feud that has been going on technically for months because MJF laid him out like five weeks before the Wembley show and then Danny came back at that show. So it's really only been going on in, in as far as building to a match between the two guys for like three weeks. So uh, I don't know. You could, I MJF could win here and you could build to a rematch because you have, you have the long Island uh, uh, dynamite in a couple of weeks or whatever plane, high planes, whatever, whatever that area where the, the tennis court is. The tennis court show is flushing right um flushing or queens flushing flushing or queens uh and then you have another pay-per-view in the beginning of october so 
you could you could have some MJF can win here, but personally, again, just because we've seen so many stops and starts, I would prefer uh, Danny to just win and both guys move on. And you can always circle back to it later in the year if you want to. But uh, in the moment, it feels like, hey, let's let's give this guy a definitive win now that he's back, and we're we're trying to push him as a serious wrestler and not the the dancing goof. Uh, Okada will defend the Continental Championship in a four way against uh, the winners of three matches on this Friday's collision. Okay. Okay. Gets a bunch of, it's, it's a way to get Okada and Orange Cassidy and two other people uh, of whoever, uh, Takeshita, I assume. They had Takeshita and Okada kind of do a, stand, a standoff, so I assume. Yeah. Eventually they'll have a singles match, maybe. Um, yes. But yeah, I don't know. It doesn't, it just, at the moment, it just feels like a way to get, get some extra people on the show, which is always a great start for a match when you're like, ah, oh, we're just doing it so nobody gets mad. <laughs> right. Well, Nightingale versus Chris Statlander in a street fight. Uh, this feud continues. Feels like this should be the blow off, but also I feel like, Willow has won every match they've had. Yes. So I mean, I guess, and you. The thing is, though, you have two heel world or two heel women's champions right now. Mm -hmm. So if Chris wins, you'd think, well, they're heating her up for something else. But both the champions are heels, unless Mercedes is losing to Sheeta, um, which I don't think she is. So, um, they they'll ch they'll chop up. A baby face and feed feed or a heel and feed them to uh feed them to Mariah as a heel. Yeah, I guess I guess you could do that. Um, so maybe Chris could still win here. Just I'm not I'm not advocating for it. I'm just saying it's something they, they would could. Do. They've yeah. they've they've done heel heel matches in the women's division before. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like I, like I said, it feels like if this is the blow off that Willow should win because she's the baby face, but also she's won. I think every except one. Every other time she's wrestled uh, Chris, so I don't know. Um, we'll see. Young Bucks will defend the tag team championships against Claudio and Wheeler, um, who are still in the Blackpool Combat Club. Uh, John Moxley is not. Mm -hmm. He has started a another faction with his side chick. That's right. And the green, uh, the green Trouser Collective. <laughs> the Green Trouser Collective. I'm doing this as Michael Cole, but I can't do the voice right now. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so the Blackpool Combat Club uh, still intact, at least with Claudio and Wheeler uh, challenging the Young Bucks. The Young Bucks, they're working limited dates. They have a limited schedule for some reason, and uh, they're the tag team champions. I assume they're keeping the tag team titles here, though. Yeah, I would assume so, because... I mean, even with limited dates, is that just like you're on you're on TV every other week, or... It's not like they're. That's been, my impression. It's not like they've been wrestling or defending these belts every week, anyway. In fact, they like started to make a storyline point out of how they hadn't defended the belts at all since they had won them. Yeah, so. they, yeah. Now it's like they're talking defense in two weeks after they went like four months with no defenses. Right. I think this will be an important match in determining whether the Bucks uh, are washed or not. Interesting. I haven't really heard a lot of that discourse, but maybe I'm just not in the right circles. Like, had a great match with Sting and Darby this year. Yes. But you know who else had a great match with Sting and Darby? Everybody except Chris Jericho and Sammy Guevara that one time. Fair. Sting, Sting, Sting and Darby were 29-1 and one in great wrestling matches. <laughs> they had great matches with Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page, for God's sake. Um, so... And then I can't really think of another good Young Bucks match this year. So, and they haven't had a lot of <laughs> just two on two tag matches this year. So, because then they did the war games and they did the anarchy in the arena and stuff. So, the last few pay per views, they've been in multi man things. So, I think this will be uh, an interesting test for them because, you know, Claudio, <laughs> Claudio and Wheeler, they're, uh, you know, they're good cardio guys. They're, they're not slouches in there, so I will. Uh, I will be interested in seeing if this is a great match or just 
okay, in which case I think I will start start Young Bucks Are Washed discourse. Interesting. And uh, Will Ospreay versus Pac for the International Championship. I loved the Poison Rana on the stage. <laughs> the, the sneak Poison Rana. It was pulled... I don't know if two if you gave that to two other wrestlers on earth that it could have come off as good as it did. Maybe like yes. Vikingo or somebody. But I don't feel like Vikingo would do that to somebody, you know? Like it has right. to be specifically Pac Pac is an evil bastard and yeah. also a cool flippy guy. And so he's like, I'm gonna kill you with a cool flip. Yes. It's like, yeah, no, that fits. <laughs> yes. Do more of that. Yes, incredible. Yes. So yes. this will be awesome. Uh, they're gonna have a great match. Uh, Osprey's gonna win, uh, and that's fine. It's fine for the champion to just beat people sometimes. <laughs> so uh, I think it'll be great. All right. Um, I went to Capital Collision last weekend. Uh, no notes. Good <laughs> show. Good show. Fun show. Um, back concessions at the uh, DC Entertainment and Sports Arena. Uh, but uh, hard to have a bad time at a, uh, at a wrestling show. And uh, thanks to uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling for uh, having me. Okay, did you uh, did you meet up with your with your buddy, the announcer? Or... Nope, blew me off. Just mm. totally still hasn't responded to my direct message. Mm. Let's be continued. My goal for the night was to hand a business card to Mercedes Monet's manager. And I did not see him. So gotcha. there you go. I did see Orange Cassidy and Will Nightingale and Viva Van and AEW writer Jennifer Pepperman there. All that. there watching Mercedes match. I saw, uh, I think there was a note from, she has like a blog or something. Is that right? Or a newsletter? It's a uh, digital magazine. I see. I saw a snippet where she said that uh, Tony Khan tried desperately to get there, but the flight times didn't work out or something, and he ended up missing it. But like, wow, they're, uh, they're really, really rolling out the car, the red carpet to make sure she feels uh, appreciated there. Oh, that's that's such a shame that Tony Khan couldn't make it. What if? Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I'm really upset about that. Yeah, no, it's a shame. It's a shame he wasn't. Would he have stood out there with with the rank the rank and file, or would he have like watched hidden yeah, stage? I think he would have done. I think he would have watched where or everyone was watching. Like the thing I don't understand is why Orange Cassidy wasn't full gimmick. Like I think that's just how he dresses, right? <laughs> I think so. Did he have like a merch merch shirt on? Uh, no. Okay, I was gonna say I think he, I think he just wears a lot of denim, honestly. <laughs> Well, there you go. Um, okay. Um, that's about all I have. Uh, is there any anything else that uh, you would like to to, uh, to cover here? Uh, not really. Uh, the trailer dropped for the Netflix Vince documentary. Oh yeah. Which uh, which by the way, Cody Rhodes filling in for Paul Levesque was uh was asked to comment on on the uh, on the Bastion Berlin presser as well as uh point blank asked if he believes Janelle Grant or not and uh you know he he answered it like like uh a politician look a human <laughs> like a real human, senator of Georgia exactly a real human being could answer that question a corporate entity representing a publicly traded company can't answer that question. Of course. Yeah, that's and he I mean he, he was in the role. He was in the role as uh he 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 let off the press conference reading off all the stats. <laughs> so yeah. uh, that was his role uh, even even more so than usual just being the the John Cena, you know, face of the of the wrestlers group. He was he was very much a a suit at that show. So Oh yeah. Uh, but yes, anyway, the, that trailer dropped. Uh, Cody mentioned that WWE had nothing to do with it. I don't think that's true. <laughs> what, the uh, the documentary? Yeah. I mean... Like, they... their their name may not appear in the credits anymore. <laughs> but 
you know, Vince and Triple H and Bruce Pritchard and everybody did interviews for it. Right. They gave all the access. And it was at the time, I mean, Bill Simmons is a pretty friendly. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't even think he would call himself a journalist, a friendly media personality to them. So mm -hmm. I don't know. Anyway, can I tell you? Um, and uh, I was chatting, we were chatting, or was the discourse about this among those that I've spoken to about it mm -hmm. is that this is going to be two projects shoehorned into one. There's going to be what was the original Vince McMahon is an eccentric a-hole who has made, uh, who's a self-made billionaire. Mm -hmm. And that's like the documentary part. And then while they were making that documentary, these scandals uh, broke. Mm -hmm. And so now they're going to have to like tack those on. But how do you marry those two things in one project? I don't know. Is I I guess they haven't said yet. Is this this is not an episode? Is this an episodic it's, thing? It is. It's like okay. six episodes, but they're all dropping on the same day. Right. Okay. So will you just do the first? I don't know, four or five. Tell the story of the company up to present day, and then and then you like the last episode is the scandal episode, right? I, I guess. I mean, that works better though if you're dropping them one at a time and you're not dropping them all at once. But true. I don't know. I, I, I mean, I, your po your point's correct. I'm just, I don't know. I also am curious, who do you think did reshoots for their talking heads? Mm -hmm. Dwayne, uh, for sure. Yeah. Paul? Has to. Has to. Um, I'm going to say Bruce didn't, because I don't think Bruce is afraid to be on screen still <laughs> praising Vince McMahon to this day. Bruce is a chameleon. <laughs> yeah. He'll... Well, again, for that part of the documentary where they're talking about what a genius he was, you know, the mad scientist, that's perfect for for Bruce to spin to spin his yarns. Brett, Brett uh, probably was a little bit negative anyway, so they can just keep what they already had with him. And then he, I mean, he's really pouring it on, though. Yeah. <laughs> In public comments lately. True. He, he is the only person that is at least attempting to imply that he has... <laughs> A conscience for working with the guy uh for so long but um yeah i don't know uh and then what i forget who the other people they showed in there austin i think was in there for a second yep i mean hulkster is probably like can i say more nice things about it? sure hulkster's political instincts i don't think are great anymore i think they're shot i think they've been shot for about 20 years at this point True. but <laughs> the tna run probably confirmed this yeah. Um, hey, Bret Hart on Raw on Monday. So, yeah. It, uh, I saw someone post about that. He has not like done anything besides just like be a face in the crowd that they cut to in a long time. So, yeah. I wonder if like, is he going to cut a promo? Is he going to like announce Natty's been off for a while? Is this where they bring Natty back and Bret just comes out with her? It'll be interesting to see. Uh... Could be what uh, what his role is i would imagine he's going to do something with one of his uh, uh children though he's going to do something with punk oh yeah that would <laughs> i forgot i forgot about one of his uh, adopted sons is uh it's floating around there you have you have drew come out and threaten to menace yes that's well, such punk, a punk did yeah. get taken out on a stretcher last week and like in a neck brace and stuff Ugh. Yeah, I did. I do forget about that. Got his eyes gouged down. <laughs> yeah, Joe Testor was uh, was great in that segment, though. He was really disgusted by what this heel was doing. That is something that is missing, I would say, generally from not multiple companies, not just WWE, but yeah. just a, a, a babyface lead announcer who is just utterly appalled by the heel's actions. I don't. I don't like Excalibur, but I can't blame him for not doing a better job given all the things that he has to do. Sure. And you could probably say similar things about Cole for that matter. Sure. But yeah. Yeah, it's nice. To your point, it is a it is a noticeable difference to have a man just in there. <laughs> just just 
appalled, shocked and appalled by the actions of a of a bad guy on a, on a wrestling show. It's yeah. something of a throwback in uh, in this day and age. Yep. All right. Um, I think that's good. Um, let's see. Now, is there anything else you like to chat about? No, I think that'll wrap it up. All right. Um, sorry about my voice, everybody. Till next time, I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. We'll be back soon with more stories from the wrestling life. Adios. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. Why is this game delayed also? Lightning. Oh, okay. Yeah, no good reason. But... <laughs> Just, just just put just... on your metal helmets and get out there, guys. <laughs> I'm laughing on the inside. I can't laugh on the outside because I'll have a coughing fit. But that's fair. Uh huh, sure. Well, it's way up there. <laughs> Pressure under fire. Done this before. I don't want this to be his first surgery. Applied himself well. These are the things that I have confidence in the young MD. I'm lost. What do you mean? I am exhausted from 30 nights. No person, even those of us who are superhuman, those of us with Herculean appetites, the diverse, the bizarre, even those of us who have shown an aptitude to fight the good fight and stay the good long battle. Even those of us can get tired. And your boy is tired after 30 consecutive nights. I have a half hour to go, and I'm going to do that half hour because I'm a pro. And that's what pros do. I'm a professional. Look it up in the book. That's what we do. We're pros. We're never rude, and we don't cop out. We don't tell you that we're ill or that we're looking for the farmhouse in the middle of a desert that were parched. We don't tell you that maybe the check didn't come through this month. And where the hell does it go anyway if your guys left 16 forwarding addresses? So what do you do? What's the answer? Yeah, you're a little perturbed now. Kind of worried about the club. Don't worry about the club. Worry about maybe Jackie my... <laughs> nah, don't worry. Okay, just cool it. Life is a breeze. Of course, some breezes, you know, at 110 miles an hour, I'll, I'll get promoted up to hurricanes. Just thought I'd pass it along. Speaking of passing along, we're going to pass along now to the newsroom, the mutual newsroom. Hi, top. Overlooking downtown, beautiful downtown studios, Roslyn, Virginia, Washington, D.C., the mutual newsroom. It's up to date on the news headlines. We'll come back. More open phone America. We'll have our salute to my man, Duke. Duke Zebert by taking him to one of his favorite places, one of mine too. Town of Cooperstown, New York. This is the Larry King Show in Washington. We'll be right back. I try to keep on keeping on.